Bobby Fischer fails to show up for his second game against Boris Spassky, causing a stir. At home, Bobby becomes increasingly paranoid, suspecting a red car outside of spying on them following his mother's warnings about individuals who may intimidate them due to their beliefs. A young Bobby is introduced to Carmine Negro, who is intrigued by his chess skills. His mother hopes Negro can beat him in chess, believing this would dissuade Bobby from the game. Negro tries to engage Bobby in non-chess conversation, but Bobby demonstrates his strength and focus on the game. Despite Bobby's mother expecting Carmine to defeat him, Bobby wins, showing he's more than capable. Determined and focused, Bobby's skill matures, earning recognition in the chess world. His single-mindedness leads to an impressive victory over renowned American master, Donald Byrne. Bobby expresses his next goal matter-of-factly, to keep defeating his opponents. Bobby returns home as the youngest ever U.S. chess champion. With vocal confrontations escalating with Carmine, he demands the whereabouts of his father, hearing he's gone with no further information. Deciding on investing in silence in solitude for his studies, Bobby chooses to move to the chess club, leaving Regina in their now vacated and finally functional apartment. As Regina and Cyril plan to move to California for political endeavors, Bobby feels betrayed. He becomes the youngest ever grandmaster after winning in Port Aras, expressing his new ambition to beat the Russians. Later, a confident Bobby concludes a match with a successful strategic move, at Port Aras, Bobby accuses the Russians of cheating and manipulative gameplay, creating an unfair advantage. He expresses his immense frustration and quit both the tournament and the game of chess, despite attempts from others to moderate his reaction. In this scene, Bobby is consoled by Carmen as he grieves the loss of his ambition to be the youngest world chess champion, blaming the Russians for the loss. Elsewhere, he has a confrontation with Paul, a lawyer who has been trying to reach him, Paul inspires Bobby to utilize his anger against the Russians as motivation and notices an article that could provoke a competitive reaction from him. Paul, a patriotic lawyer, approaches Bobby Fischer, showing shared interest in chess and offering representation. He inspires Bobby to return to competitive chess to challenge the Soviet dominance in the game, which he sees as a political statement against America. Bobby appears intrigued but insists on a fair playing field if he returns to competition. Paul presents Bobby's case to the chess committee, emphasizing his dedication to the game and his knowledge of Russian tactics. The committee is hesitant, considering Bobby's past behavior an issue. Meanwhile, Bill Lombardi, a former chess player who has defeated Spa's Sky and Bobby in the past, is sought to mentor Bobby despite concerns about his unpredictable nature. Bill, the mentor, critically breaks down Bobby's previous game against chess grandmaster Petrosian, pointing out his flawed attempt at a pawn sacrifice. He likens the Russians to boa constrictors and suggests a more aggressive strategy to counter their play. Bobby the learner attentively absorbs this valuable advice. Bobby plays a mesmerizing game against his mentor, Bill, demonstrating a refined and aggressive strategy in which even the opponent's queen stands powerless. Afterwards, amidst preparations for the upcoming tournament in L.A., news breaks of the Soviet chess team's arrival, including reigning world champion Boris Spassky. Bobby is dissatisfied with his current accommodations and argues with Bill about the situation. He compares his own situation to that of the well-funded Russian team. Later, Bobby meets Donna and they decide to go for a walk together. While walking with Donna, a soon-to-be intimate friend, Bobby confides about his lack of sexual experience. Meanwhile, during a practice match using famous players' moves, Bobby delivers a surprising loss. As Bobby's match approaches, tension rises as he goes missing momentarily. Despite Bill's faith in Bobby's punctuality, anxiety lingers amongst the team. The 14th scene unfolds as Bobby makes a dramatic entry seconds before his important match against Ivanovich. Despite the surprise, he came out victorious, beating the third best player and creating history. Later, he demands to be treated on par with his Russian counterparts, insisting on stylish arrival in a black car. Bobby secures a bigger payday and better arrangements for his matches. Later, he grows increasingly paranoid, fearing that his phone is being bugged. He asks the hotel operator's help to track down Regina Fisher, likely his family member, laying bare his vulnerability away from the game. Bobby chooses to stay focused on the upcoming game and pass the opportunity to be with Carmen. Meanwhile, the commentator highlights Bobby's current winning streak and his increased demands from tournament promoters. Bobby is preparing himself for his upcoming final match against the skilled Russian Boris Spassky. Bobby is busy preparing for his match against Spassky and is distant from Carmen. Even though he loses the match against Spassky, Bobby is confident about his skills and refuses to accept the runners-up medal. 
Despite his disappearance, it's suggested that Bobby will return because chess is everything to him. Father and Paul discuss the geopolitical undercurrents linked with Bobby's chess matches against Soviet player Spassky. While Paul convinces the father about their nationalistic duty, Carmen questions Paul's interest in Bobby's chess career. Paul reveals that Bobby is one of the best chess players he's ever seen. Paul warns Carmen about the psychological toll professional chess can take, using the tragic story of Paul Morphy as an example. Despite recognizing Bobby's immense talent, he doubts Bobby's capacity to handle three years of global tournament play. Unbeknownst to them, Bobby is elsewhere, growing paranoid about being watched. In an outburst, Bobby confronts the men he believes are following him. He subsequently triumphs at chess in Hungary, defeating Viktor Korchnoi, and asserts his resolution to become world champion. As his success continues, he remains certain that the Russians are perturbed by his prowess in chess. The scene begins with Bobby discussing his progress in the chess tournament with the press. Later, Bobby is seen listening to a conspiracy-focused broadcast. His brother-in-law Stanley takes a brief break from his busy schedule to visit. Stanley learns about Bobby's broken phone with a hint that Bobby himself might be the cause. Stanley expresses concern about Bobby's mental health, revealing that a psychiatrist's analysis suggests signs of paranoia and delusional psychosis. They discuss some of Bobby's conspiracy theories, which include comments about the Soviets, Jews, and the Chess Federation. Unable to persuade Bobby to seek help, they feel increasingly helpless as they watch his mental state deteriorate. The scene moves to Bobby who, untouched by his mental issues, continues to astound the world with his chess skills. Defeating Tigran Petrosian, he qualifies for the World Chess Championships, leading to an expected face-off with Boris Spassky. Bobby unabashedly proclaims his superiority to the press despite never having beaten Spassky before. After his victory over Petrosian, Bobby's paranoia about Russian spies escalates. The media approaches him for interviews, foreseeing a thrilling championship match against Spassky. Paul advises him to temper his conspiracy theories during the press engagements. Bobby becomes suspicious after hearing Paul's vague comment about people being worried by his erratic behavior. He is taken aback when Paul confesses to having met with Bobby's sister Joan without indicating it earlier, leading Bobby to further question Paul's intentions. Bobby's skepticism about Paul's secretive dealings with his family spurs a heated conversation. Feeling betrayed, he demands that Paul stop the car. Upon returning to his room, Bobby starts listening to reel-to-reel -reel tapes, an action that surprises Joan as they tend to be theological discussions. Joan discusses with someone about the possibility of seeking professional help for Bobby, but is convinced he would never agree to it. Despite Joan's worries about Bobby's mental state and her consideration of therapy, Bobby is more focused on the upcoming chess championship against Boris Spassky. His self-assured demeanor builds anticipation, gains media attention, and Bobby is lauded as potentially the world's greatest chess player during a talk show interview. During the show, Bobby expresses his joy in breaking an opponent's ego on the chessboard, to the amusement of the audience. Simultaneously, another narration discusses the geopolitical tensions, including USSR's expansion and Israel's occupation of Palestine, drawing an intense parallel to the power dynamics of Bobby's upcoming match. Bobby is preparing for his match against the Russian champion, demanding specific terms, including a large sum of money and his food to be flown in and prepared in front of him. However, Bobby is also conflicted, seen in his willingness to forfeit the match because he believes he is the best player anyways, even without participation in the tournament. Prior to his departure for the tournament, Bobby suddenly wants to renegotiate the terms of his participation, demanding a higher percentage. As Paul tries to calm him down and manage the situation, Bobby considers not boarding the plane at all. The stress escalates when photographers swarm them, prompting Bobby to leave. As Bobby flees the airport, the media speculates his absence at the opening ceremonies of the World Chess Championships. Trembley evades press questions, while Schmidt remarks on the chess match being one player short and Bobby's irresponsibility. Bobby backs out from going to the airport due to the unexpected appearance of photographers, against what he claims had been promised. He calls Joan, explaining how he feels betrayed and mistreated, further feeding into his paranoia. A paranoid Bobby suspects a conspiracy against him, fueled by the 727 airplane incident and his fear of the KGB. He imploringly relates his concerns to Joan, panicked over alleged signals on the phone and the absence of requested security. Refusing to trust anyone, he even suspects his food is tainted. Bobby's paranoia rises as he hears strange noises on the phone, worrying Joan. 
Paul arrives announcing they've received more prize money from an English chess enthusiast. The final blow is a call from Henry Kissinger, adding to Bobby's complex fear web. Receiving a call from Dr. Henry Kissinger fuels Bobby's paranoia further. The news of him finally deciding to participate in the chess match in Iceland makes waves. Bobby finally arrives in Reykjavik amidst radio commentators discussing him and comparing him to Ali in boxing. Upon arriving in Iceland, Bobby is greeted by Chester and shown his accommodations, which consist of a large house with a sauna. Later, he reconnects with William, relaxing and enjoying a moment of celebrity before his high-pressure chess match. The tension and excitement of the upcoming match are palpable worldwide, with even Nixon installing a TV in the Oval Office to watch. The stakes are high, likened to World War III on a chessboard, and America feels. The long-anticipated chess match between Bobby and Boris Boskai finally begins. Bobby picks the black pieces and struggles to concentrate, disturbed by the noise from the cameras and the audience. He demands that the camera be moved back in the audience silenced. Despite his complaints about distractions, Bobby loses the first game to Boris Spasky after struggling to concentrate. Frustrated with the circus-like atmosphere, Bobby refuses to continue playing and accuses the organizers of not keeping their promises. Following his first game loss, Bobby is convinced that he has been manipulated by the organizers and believes a conspiracy involving Russians and Jews. Unresolved issues from his past bubble up, leading to a heated argument with Paul. Insisting on conditions such as no audience and no cameras, Bobby threatens to withdraw from the tournament. Paul realizes how seriously upset Bobby is when he points out a missed opportunity in the game. As Bobby's erratic behavior continues, his demands heighten including a change in chessboard. When Bobby doesn't show up at the scheduled match, it is won by Spasky by default according to the rules. The press predicts that Fisher is unlikely to surmount Spasky's two-point lead in the tournament. News outlets report Bobby's no-show at the second match, generating global attention. Paul, Bobby's lawyer, appeals to him to play the game, mentioning even the president has tried to reach him. However, Bobby begins to suspect Paul's loyalty, questioning if he has been compromised by the CIA or KGB. After accommodating Bobby's demands and moving the game to a smaller room, Boris Boskai agrees to continue the World Chess Championship. Despite a dangerous chess strategy, Bobby Fischer manages to beat Spasky in the third game, causing both surprise and celebration. Bobby Fischer's victory over Boris Spasky causes excitement across the country, leading to a newfound popular interest in chess. Despite Spasky's strategic moves, Bobby manages to win Game 5 of the championship, continuing his surprising dominance. Games change drastically when Bobby abandons his signature Sicilian opening, leaving Spasky and the Grandmasters perplexed. Bobby's unconventional moves lead to another victory. His dominance stuns everyone, prompting a round of applause, a rare occurrence in chess. Despite suffering from paranoia and conspiracy theories, Bobby remains committed to his search for what he perceives as the truth. His understanding of chess as a singular path towards the absolute truth mirrors his worldview. Stanley experiments with Icelandic, summer, light, and remarks on how Bobby's game has an almost theoretical precision.